have to give it the value that uh, modulus in uh, modulus index is for my first element and modulus letter is for my second element and then you run it and let's see if still there is an error not yes now there is an error what the error is error says not enough values to unpack expected to got one that means what is happening here is the uh, error uh, is basically shown in this particular loop right for index and letter so what is happening here is i want to access two elements that is i want to access index as well as letter but i am only giving it only one thing that is i am only providing it my sequence so what python basically does is although our understanding is correct right because uh, the index and letter both are present in this particular string only but what python doesn't understand is python thinks that index and letter the user wants it from two different strings but we don't have two different strings we just have one string so python doesn't understand this so that's why it says that expected to and got one that is it expected to that because we have defined two things here that that is we want two things so python expected that there should also be two strings here but we have only given one string so that's why it says that expected to and got one so that's an error so to rectify this what you can do is we will be using another inbuilt function of python which is known as enumerate now what this enumerate basically means is it will iterate over your string that means whatever string you have so my string here is my sequence so what this enumerate function basically does is it uh, it is an iterable function that means if you don't have if you if you are getting any kind of this type of error where from a single string you want to access two elements what you can do is you can just write enumerate so what this enumerate will does is it will tell python that no the user is not giving two strings it and the user is asking to give you two values from one string only so what enumerate will does is it will keep on iterating this sequence only and allow python to give you the required result so once you print this thing and uh, you see the output so here you get an output now output says 0 equals to a 1 equals to t 2 equals to g so for every indexing it is giving you the corresponding element as well now one more thing you have to keep here in mind is a general enumerate function the syntax of an enumerate is the string that you are giving followed by a value now this value can be anything okay now here we haven't given any value so if you don't give any value the by default python consider it to be zero so that's why it's giving you from the zeroth element okay but you can also access it from a particular element let's say i want to access it from 2 right so i will just write my sequence comma 2 and then if i print it it will give me the output but that won't be my desired output that i want so let's see what it gives it will start your indexing from 2 it won't start from 0 it will start indexing your numbering from 2 but it will still correspond to a but the thing is we know that the index of a is 0 but the output is saying that index of a is 2 right so here this thing doesn't work out this thing will work out when uh, you will be working with the algorithms whereby you have a particular set of algorithms thereby so instead of writing anything 2 just start uh, make it 0 um, by default you will take the value of 0 and start the indexing from 0 onwards is this clear with everyone Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, you will be using enumerate pretty often uh, from now onwards, but like uh, not that much. But it will be required in certain case, certain scenarios uh, whereby it becomes difficult for the people to like you know give uh, access to values from a single string. Also, this thing you have to be pretty much clear about here: modulus i and modulus s, and what these things basically stands for, and how you will be providing the values to this. So just keep this thing in your mind when you are accessing the indexing and the corresponding element value in this way. Don't write a comma here because if you write a comma here, then that it will show an error. Okay, you are directly indexing it from that particular way. So you can write it in this way. Uh, even you can access uh, like just uh, in string you access a particular element. You can access your uh, element from here as well. Let's say you want to access uh, my sequence and then just write whatever element you want. As I want my fifth element of my sequence, you can just print it. and it will give you the corresponding element as c so whatever attributes which are true for a general string those are also true here because here we are just uh, whatever dna sequence that the user has given it is basically a string only so whatever attributes are true for string that will be true here as well so in this way you can also access your individual uh, element you can also uh, count uh, your number of bases so let's say you have uh, uh, defined this particular dna sequence and you want to count uh, a particular set of uh, numbers let's say i want to count uh, how many 
80s are there okay so now what this will do is that you can uh, again use an inbuilt function of python which says uh, let's say print my sequence and the inbuilt function is dot count method right so we'll write dot count now in the parentheses in the parameter you have to uh, make python understand what exactly is that you want to count okay so here let's say i want to count my number of uh, adenine bases so i'll write my sequence dot count a okay and then i'll just run the program and it will say five so that means there are basically five adenine bases which are there in my this dna sequence so you can count as well a a a a and a there so there are basically five you can repeat it as well let's say i want to count my 80 so you can individually do it as well let's say you want to count individually let's say you want to count t and you can do it and it will give you the corresponding count of t as well also sometimes what you can do is you want you can count the pairs as well let's say you want to count how many 80 pairs are basically there so then you can run it and then uh, it will say that okay there are two 80 pairs so what basically this does is it first count the a and then say t it says that a and t are together and this is my pair so it considers this pair as one and then it goes again uh, next 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 and then again it sees an 80 pair it will count it as two so it gives you the output as two in the similar way you can count a gc uh, pair as well or ag pair as well whatever pair you want so that is a basic uh, inbuilt para, uh, like uh, code for python that is dot count method you can use to count whatever you want from your dna sequences you can count your nuclear add bases even you can count a pair bases whatever you want okay so this is by using a dot count method is this clear with everyone yes sir yes sir okay now one of the very important thing here that we have to focus is uh, and you will be also quite often uh, facing this particular problem or an exercise problem is to count a gc content or an at content in your dna sequence okay so let's say i have this sequence here with me let's make it a bit long so let's say if not right now i have uh, this as my sequence now i say that okay uh, find the gc content of this sequence so the very first thing that you have to keep this thing in mind is uh, to understand the formula of how can one calculate the gc content of any particular dna sequence so either it can be a gc content or it can be an at content so let's say you whatever you have at content or gc content so the formula is let's say we stick to gc content so the formula is first you have to count the number of g base pair in your dna sequence and then you have to calculate the number of c base pair in your dna sequence and then you have to add both of them together and then you have to divide it with the total uh, length of your dna sequence so this is a basic formula to find a gc content and then obviously whatever the result is multiply it with 100 and you will get it in the percentage format so the basic formula is uh, whatever if if it is 80 content so first you have to calculate how many a's are there in your dna sequence how many t's are there in your dna sequence add both of them together divide it with the total length of your dna and then uh, whatever result that you get multiply it with 100 and that will be your percentage of your gc content or ad content whatever it is okay so before proceeding on with this particular example i will quickly show how you can uh, actually calculate the length of the dna or any kind of string that you want so for that you have a inbuilt function called as len and then you can write uh, like whose length you want to calculate i want to calculate the length of my sequence and then you can just run it and it will be giving you the length so it says 30 that means my sequence length is 30 base pair long so you will can you can use the inbuilt function len for calculating any length of a string or a dna sequence right so now let's say i want to calculate the gc content here so what i can do is uh, i know that first i have to calculate uh, g content then i have to calculate the c content and then i have to calculate the length of the dna so what i can do is i can create three variables or in this case you can also create two variables first variable will be storing the number of g's second variable will be storing number of c's and then i will be using these two variable to calculate my gc content so what i can write is i will uh, let's say i write uh, g count so g count will basically store the number of g similarly i will write c count which will store the number of c's so g count what how, how uh, we can count a uh, number of g's so we will write uh, my sequence dot count and what i want to count i want to count g right so keep this thing in mind whatever you want to count it should be written as it is as it is provided by 
if you write small g here, it will be zero because there is no small g in your DNA sequence. So you have to be careful here. Whatever you want to count, you have to be writing the name as it is. In a similar way, you can count c as well. So I'll write my sequence uh, dot count and I will write capital C. And then let's say I want, uh, I will be storing my answer in another variable and I name it as uh, GC content, right? Now, while writing the formula, uh, there, there are times when a student makes a very basic mistake of calculating. What people will do here is that they will write uh, like G count and then I have to add it with a C count and then I will divide it with the length of my DNA, that is my sequence, uh, sorry, my sequence. So will this give me the right result? Can anyone no, sir. Why? Sir, because it will just divide the C count with the length of my sequence. Right. It won't divide the whole. Right, right. So for that, uh, what we have to do is we have to first uh, keep this G count and C count within a particular bracket. So that first this thing will be carried out, like addition will be carried out, followed by division with the length of the sequence. So this is where my GC content is calculated. Now I just want to print whatever my output is. So I can print, uh, let's say GC content, whatever my GC content is, I'll print it and will give me an output saying, this is my GC content right? 0 0.566. And if I want to convert it into a, a percentage, just whatever, just one thing you have to do in print, write GC content into 100. So it will give you it in a percentage format. So here uh, the output will be 56.66. So in this my particular DNA sequence, uh, the GC content is 56.6% or 56.67%. That is what my GC content is. So this is uh, how you can do it without um, using a BioPython. Okay. Now we will see the same example with using BioPython. Now the very first thing uh, that you have to do uh, in a BioPython is to import your package. So how to import it? You, uh, the way to import is first you will write from you will write bio dot seq what this bio dot seq basically means is in your bio python sequence that is your package here from this you want to import your sequence you will write seq so sequence or sequence short form is seq in a bio package so this is the very basic uh first line of code that will be followed in every BioPython experiment or every BioPython coding that we will do. This is the very common line that we will be using every time. So what this from this import, this means this is your main package, which you have installed. And from that package, you want a specific package. Also, you want a specific attribute you want to uh, import. So you can import it in this way, like from bio.sec import sec. What this here means is from BioPython sequence package, import the sequence package. So you'll be importing your sequence package. And then what you can do is now, as I already told you, if BioPython wasn't there, then you have to uh, write codes for every line uh, to count your GC content, right? Just as we did it right now. First, you have to calculate your G content, then you have to calculate your C content. Then you have to also write a code uh, expressing the formula of how to calculate GC content, and then you will be printing your output. So instead of writing all those three lines of codes, what you can do is there's an inbuilt function uh, in BioPython uh, that actually stores uh, the uh, algorithm for GC content to calculate GC content. So what you can do is you can just import it from your bio uh, Python package as well. For that, what you can write is from bio.seq uh, utils. What this means is from bio sequence utilities that is another package inside the bio sequence only you will be importing your gc content package so the name of the gc content package is just gc it is stored in that way only if you want you can individually go and check out your libraries for uh, what are the different packages and libraries installed inside biopython you can go and do that as well and you just go to your biopython folder there will be a folder named as lib library or packages form and thereby you can see what are the different packages which are actually come inbuilt in BioPython. So you will just do this from bio uh, utils import GC. And then uh, first you have to define your sequence. So you will write my sequence uh, followed by whatever sequence you want. Let's say I write ATGC, whatever it is. So, so this is my sequence. I define my sequence and just I want to calculate my GC content. So what I can do is I will just write print. I will call the package that is this is my package. So I will call it print GC and then from which uh, sequence I want to find my GC content. I want to find my GC content from my sequence that I have defined. So I will write 
my sequence and then i'll just run it and it will automatically give me the answer in a percentage format so it will 60% so that means there is there is 60% uh, gc content present in my this particular sequence now sometimes when you are importing bio sequence to write a particular sequence you can write it in this way as well that doesn't matter also sometimes you may find people writing it in this way seq and then write the sequence so both of the thing means the same that means uh, you are initially defining that this is my sequence that i want to handle out in the particular experiment or whatever uh, coding that you want to do so people can also write it in this way even if you don't use it it's still uh, like uh, there's no issue it's just that once you are if you are using this particular format make sure you import sequence also because sometimes what happens if you are not importing this sequence and you are writing seq the error will be uh, the python will give you an error saying that seq is not defined or there is no attribute saying seq because you haven't imported your sequence uh, package uh, from biosec okay so in that way also and if you run it again it will give you the same uh, result so python doesn't discriminate between writing sequence in this way or without it also you can write it so that is not an issue okay so this is how uh, if you if you have installed bio python this is how we will be importing individual packages as well from um, bio python is this clear with everyone yes sir yes sir okay so this was just a very basic gist of how you can use bio python and just python also to do different kind of uh, like bioinformatic programming so tomorrow we will be looking at more detail in depth like how you can write a particular sequence in a, a fasta format and all those things and we will also be studying about like parsing the data how you can parse the data as the like in the upcoming lectures we will be looking at that as well but this was just an introductory session to show you what is the basic difference between uh, general python and bio python and what are the basic packages that are different in python and bio